Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. Continuing on in our study of the difference between advising and condemning by Imam Ibn Rajib uh, rahmatullah alayhi. Uh, we read a portion of the treatise where he spoke about the manners of advising. The manners of advising. And he said, rahimahullah ta'ala, and from this, this, uh, from this discussion is, when it is said to a man in his face that which he hates to hear. So if this is done with the intention of sincerely advising him, then it is good. <clears throat> Some of the Salaf would say to their brothers, do not advise me until you tell me in my face what I hate to hear. So when an individual informs his brother about a defect found in him, in order that he may uh, avoid it, it is good for the one being informed about one of his defects to make an excuse for it, if an excuse for it exists. But if this advising is done with the intention of only Blaming, blaming him due to a sin that he committed, then it is reprehensible and condemned. It was said to one of the Salaf, would you love that someone inform you about your faults? So he replied, if he does so with the intention of blaming me, then no. So blaming and condemning someone for a sin uh, he committed is detested. The Prophet wasallam forbade that a fornicating woman be condemned, even though he commanded that she be lashed with a whip. So she was whipped according to the legal limits, uh, but she was not condemned for her sin, nor was she blamed for it. Ahabat <clears throat> uh, this brings up uh, an issue, which is an important issue, because, uh, and, and many people are very concerned about it, which they should be concerned. And that is the question which has been posed to many of our ulama, and I came across many fatawa of, of the ulama, of especially the contemporary ulama, about this issue. Is it a condition to uh, advise someone before refuting them? And the fatawa I came across from imams in this time, like Imam uh, Bin Baz, Imam Al Albani, Imam uh, Mukbil bin Hadi Al Wadi. Wa Imam uh, bin Uthaymeen and other mashayikh and a'imma like Sheikh Rabi' bin Hadi al Madkhali, Hafidullah Ta'ala, and, and, and those other uh, and many great a'imma, is that no, it is not a condition. That it is not a condition. All of them said it is not a condition, meaning that before you refute someone, does not mean you necess necess necessarily have to go and advise them. And some of the tafsil, and I'm just giving you the malachis or the, the summary of what was said, is that one of the principles that I recall from uh, Ben Baz and others was that if the person's sin is outward, meaning their uh, mistake, their bid'ah, their statement or what have you is an outward statement so for example like many people have written to me about my uh refutation of uh dr qadi and nu'man ali khan and said why don't you advise them why don't you advise them even if others have advised them why don't you advise them why do, why do you make this video <clears throat> and i tried to be respectful in the video but the fact that their mistakes are publicized, they're not just simple, these are things I heard personally uh, without hearing. These are publicized mistakes that they have videos and audios that are spread around the whole dunya. So these are outward mistakes calling for an outward response. And this being the reason, and this is what uh, the A'imma uh, what they have to say with regards to this discussion, and this is what we try to follow. And this point that Imam Ibn Rajab is making, it seems to allude to that it is uh, a very important issue to advise a person as well. You know, advise it and say it to their face. And this definitely would be the case with regards to, and the examples that the Imam mentioned, was talking about Imams of the Salaf. So meaning how the Salaf dealt with one another because they're not dealing with Ahl Bid'ah. When they dealt with Ahl Bid'ah, that they dealt with them even if they did not encounter them 
And one perfect example that I read in the discussion about this uh, issue was the example of uh, Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhumah when he heard about the Qadriya, when he heard about the Qadriya in Iraq, that there were a group of individuals who were speaking about the Qadr. And this is like, like, likewise what we have of these people who are speaking about issues, belittling Tawheed and so forth, that we've heard it, we've heard it with our own ears. It wasn't even reported to us. But rather we heard this from their own videos and their own audio cassette, that they were tending to belittle the ulama and belittle the concept of Tawheed. So it called for an outward response. So Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu had, had it reported to him from some individuals who had heard and encountered these qad, the Qadariya in Basra, in Iraq. And he said, they came to him and they said, you know, Oh, Amir, uh, oh, uh, you know, Sahabi Jalil, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, uh, we've heard of people, or we've, enco we've encountered, and what do you say about people who speak about the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be, you know, basically belittle that affair, say that, Allah's knowledge is, is uh, limited about the decree of Allah, uh, about the, the Qadr, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, and, and so on and so forth. And he responded, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, by saying, tell them that Ibn Umar is free from them, and they are free from me. Letting them, letting us know that it was not necessary. He didn't say, oh, let me go check and let me go uh, discuss with him first. No, he immediately made a hukum, showing us that this is the madhab of the salaf, especially in dealing with ahl bid'ah. That he immediately responded, said, let them know that I am free. Ibn Umar is free from them, and they are free from him. Meaning we have no relationship. They are not from ahl sunnah and we don't want to have anything to do with him because of this wicked innovation that they are spreading outward and that has come to us. So letting us know that it's not a condition that you go and go up to the person and you sit with them and you hold their hand, especially from Ahl Bid'ah. Now if it's from Ahl Sunnah, then you should maintain their status. It isn't necessary that you run to the ulama to try to get a hukum on that person, which has happened countless times, we've seen so-and-so, the, the people go through and compile their mistakes. This is not what we're talking about, especially from someone from Ahl Sunnah. Compiling their mistakes, listening, spending your nights listening and trying to find mistakes, compiling them, then going to the ulama to get a hukum, to get a ruling and a judgment against that individual. This is not what we're talking about. And this is not from advising. And this does not illustrate that this person, these individuals, have uh, good and righteous intentions. But we're talking about individuals who have righteous intentions, who are advising the people for their mistakes and advising the ummah against their mistakes for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the righteous intention. As we mentioned, in a'mala bin niyat, verily actions are tied to the intentions. So therefore, it shows us the importance of not being blameworthy by blaming others and trying to belittle them, but rather from the uh, means of advising them that we should uh, refute the mistakes. And when we refute the mistakes, if someone is outwardly making mistakes and calling to their bid'ah, then they deserve to be outwardly refuted. And if this person is a person from Ahl bid'ah, who's a, a person from Ahl sunnah, who's fallen into error and mistake or even bid'ah, then yes, you can refute that openly. But it would be appropriate to advise them, to, to let them correct themselves. And when you are refuting, maintaining their status, saying one of our brothers, may Allah preserve him, fell into this error, such and such, and this is incorrect, and show with adillah from Kitab wa Sunnah that this is incorrect, that this is not from the minhaj of the Salaf. 
and from the ijma, showing and illustrating with dalil, but not with the purpose of belittling them, but with the purpose of correcting them and protecting the ummah from their mistakes. Imam Ibn Rajab, rahmatullah then he went on in his treatise and he said, it was reported in a Tirmidhi and other collections in marfu form, meaning that the, uh, it went back to the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whosoever condemns his brother for a sin, meaning a sin he committed, will not die until he has committed it. The hadith is referring to a sin of which the person who committed it has repented from. Al-Fudayl, rahimahullah ta'ala, said, the believer conceals the sin of his brother and advises him, while the evildoer disgraces and condemns him. This is a very important uh, narration of one of the salaf of this ummah, Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad, rahimahullah showing us that it's not necessary and that we should not be condemning people for their sin. But rather, again, it is from we uh, that you should advise your brothers and sisters if they have fallen into error. And that if their error is something open, then yes, you can advise them openly. And yes, you can refute their error openly. But again, checking your intention so that you're not trying to belittle them and that you are not belittling them, but rather you are correcting their mistake. And as Fudayl said, the believer conceals the sin of his brother and advises him, while the evildoer disgraces and condemns him. And we don't want to fall into that. Fall into that. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all and bless us have to be uh, just when criticizing one another and be of those people who correct our own sins and spend more time correcting ourselves than attacking the honor of others. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.